you know, Joel Sherman wrote in the New York Post, right, and I think he's dead on correct. It's a move that you've seen the Yankees make year in and year out, take advantage of small market teams that can't pay their star players. Uh, the Mets didn't play a, a king's ransom to get Lindor and Carlos Carrasco here from Cleveland. Uh, so they were able to take advantage of a situation, and that's what, when Steve Cohen addressed the media and said, well, we're going to have a... You know, we're going to treat this team and have a payroll that's equivalent to having a, you know, a a big market team in Major League Baseball, a major market team in Major League Baseball. Well, these are the type of deals that you want to take advantage of. And it's an unbelievable acquisition. There's nothing not to like. We had a couple of Mets fans yesterday, Maggie, call up and say, I don't love it. I'd rather have DJ LeMayhew or, you know, I don't love this kind of deal. I loved Jimenez as a player. You know, nonsense. Lindor is such a special player that it, it unless you watch him on a day in day out basis you know the statistics don't really do him justice even though the stats are off the charts for a right. guy shortstop defensively is great the 30 plus home runs the 40 doubles that he's going to give you on a year in year out basis the infectious attitude adding his personality into that clubhouse now for Met fans, though, you want to find out what exactly is next. <laughs> yeah, and it feels a little like, um, you know, a little um, greedy to immediately start thinking about what's next for the Mets, but you can't help but go there in your mind. One thing about Lindor, though, just, you know, kind of as the the fallout, and the, as Sandy said yesterday, we're going to let the dust settle on this trade, you know, kind of let everyone digest it fully before they start getting into their next deals and stuff. And Sandy, by the way, is going to join uh, Craig and Evan today at 5 o'clock to talk about this Lindor and Carrasco deal. But the thing is, is, is you know, for this to really work, obviously, Lindor has to get signed to a long-term deal. And the reason why I am so optimistic about that is not just because, you know, Sandy said yesterday he's optimistic and and Jared Porter saying that they're optimistic they can get a deal done with Lindor. Oh, by the way, they've had one conversation with him and have had zero conversations with his agent, yet they are very optimistic they're going to get the deal done. But I think it also is good for Lindor if they get the deal done this year. You look at the crop of shortstops who are going to be free agents after this season, and do we really think that if baseball teams are feeling this massive economic crunch because of the pandemic, are they all of a sudden going to be out from under it starting next year and they're going to be handing out $300 million contracts to Seager or to Trevor Story or to to Javi Baez. So if I'm Lindor, I also want to get the deal done here because I realize that the Mets are in this thing. If he wants to be a winner, go back to the World Series like he did with Cleveland when they unfortunately fell in Game 7 to the Cubs, then the Mets are going to give you an incredible opportunity to do that. So I think for people who are like, wow, now Lindor has all this leverage and only you know he can basically hold the Mets hostage for whatever contract he, he wants, maybe. However, if I'm Lindor, I also want to get the deal done because I don't want to be competing with these other guys who are going to be on the market next year. So that's one part about it. That's why I would be – it's going to be, I think, a, a good collaboration between two sides to get something long-term done. Like Mookie Betts got an extension moves before he ever played a game for the Dodgers. That's the way to do it, and I think the Mets will work very hard towards that. In terms of what's next, I, I'm curious how my fellow Mets fans feel about this because I love this. I think this is such a influx of talent. All the things that you just ran through, Moose, about why this is such a good trade for the Mets. I love the Carrasco gets in this deal as well because pitching was an area they needed to add to. If this is the last significant move they make, I'm good. If there's no George Springer around the corner, if there's, I mean, I think Trevor Bauer, that ship probably sailed here. If there's no other massive free agent signing this year, I'm good. I'm now just curious, like, how how creative can the Mets possibly get? You know, it looks like uh, the $210 million luxury tax threshold came up yesterday. And Sandy was kind of noncommittal about it, right? Like they agree yeah. that that's a threshold, but, you know, there's no mandate that they have to stay under it by any stretch. But if you have – they're at about $180 million right now. So if you have about $30 million to play with, however, you do want to keep some, as Brian Cashman would say, powder dry in case you need to make some upgrades midseason if any kind of injuries or something happens, then I don't know if Springer is still a thing. And you know what? If it's not, I'm not going to be so disappointed. I'm not going to say, well, the Mets didn't go far enough. I'm not going to bash them and say, you only went halfway or you only went this far. Why not finish the deal? This, to me, is amazing. You want to add other bullpen arms, other depth pieces for the starting rotation, 
or a center fielder who maybe is just a defensive-minded center fielder that is, doesn't have all the tools of George Springer, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I, I don't know if the Met fan will be. Um, and we'll open up to the calls at 877-337-6666. I, I think the Met fans still would like George Springer. They don't have uh, an everyday outfielder. Maybe they don't. And he's a, a really good one. I know he's in his early 30s, and maybe there's conjecture of that. You can get maybe two, maybe three more years of him playing defense out in center field before you have to move his position. But they don't have a natural center fielder on this team. And as Jared Porter mentioned yesterday, what's the focus? Well, it's up the middle. Well, they've addressed shortstop. They've addressed catcher. Pitching is up the middle. They addressed that with Carrasco. They could use another bullpen arm. And they've been flirting with George Springer uh, and having conversations with Springer uh, for quite some time. And the Blue Jays are also in on George Springer here. So, you know, I, I look at the Mets and, and as a Yankee fan – Growing up, those are the type of moves where, you know, I was talking to, to Costos, who's going to hop on with us later on the program yeah. uh, a little bit yesterday afternoon. He's a big-time Yankee fan as well. So having a conversation with him. And one thing we were talking about and is that you get excited when you have these kind of moves, right? You do get excited when the Yankees would make this kind of move. It's not like the Mets have not made big trades in the past. Carter, no, Hernandez, Johan Santana, trades. Mike Piazza. The Mets have made big trades in the past. Yeah. Some have been really successful. Some, obviously, Santana was you know, was hurt and yeah. did not pitch to the level that he expected with uh, that he was going to be uh, in a Met uniform. And Piazza became an absolute rock star and the second most popular Met uh, and a foundational piece for this team um, after they acquired him from the Marlins. Will that be here with Lindor? I don't think you make that trade, Maggie, even though they have not had conversations with Lindor and his agent without the notion of signing Lindor long-term. And I agree with you. I think when you look at the, read the marketplace, I think he's the best shortstop should he hit free agency next offseason. But you also have to have the understanding that the marketplace has changed. The economics yeah. have changed as and well. He knows that. And and he has he knows that. And he turned down a two hundred million dollar deal in Cleveland. He was looking for three hundred million. We'll see if the two sides are able to come together. But back to the Yankee point for a second, because I got you know talking to Costos and I got some tweets from Yankee fans yesterday saying, Well, where's the Yankee fan reaction? Well what what exactly would you, you know, old school George Steinbrenner would have signed Trevor Bauer last night. I mean, he just would have. I mean, that would have been the reaction because George was the king of the back pages and loved dominating and then he would the have back locked, pages. No, but then he would have locked Bauer and Garrett Cole into a cage so they could have a death match well, that no, would have well, been. But, but the point <laughs> they being could just fight with each other. Be, and, and tell there, old school yeah. Yankees, there would be a natural Show reaction me. to what the Mets just did because George loved the back pages. He was bothered when the Mets dominated the back pages. And this is a move that old school, and it, it shows you just where the Yankees are financially because the Yankees like Lindor, love Lindor as a player. There's nothing not to like, but they were not in on Francisco Lindor in Cleveland, and he ends up being a Met. And I think that does, as we get, as the Met fans are rejoicing, I think Yankee fans in this area come to the realization that, you know, what Brian Cashman was spitting out was the truth. They are in on DJ LeMahieu. There are economical restrictions this offseason. He was trying to tell you, lay the groundwork about what realistically the Yankees could do this offseason, but it did bother Yankee fans across the area that Lindor is a, a, is a Met well, and is not going to be a Yankee, and I get that, and I understand that, and Met fans should celebrate because, you know what, the Mets are now going to be operated on a different level than they ever have been before because of what Cohen's net worth is, because you've got a good brain trust with Sandy Alderson, they can now take advantage of situations. And Sandy was even asked yesterday during that conference call, Maggie, the difference between his first run as Mets general manager or president of ba uh, baseball operations and now the second go around coming back under Steve Cohen. And he didn't throw the Will Ponds or Saul Cats under the bus, but he said, listen, Every job and yeah. every situation is a little bit different. Yeah.